Today I'll be talking about liquid cooling in Six Sigma ET. I'll talk about how to build up a model, how to find and correct leaks, and how to go about post-processing. I'll start with building up a model. So here we have an incomplete liquid cooling model in which the liquid flows in from the bottom left via a pump supply, flows through these manifolds to cool down the dims before circulating back to two cold plates in the middle which cool these high power components. The coolant will then flow out of the model to the bottom right. I'll start by bringing in the other cold plate. And I'll do that by bringing in a CAD model. And here we have an STL file. But we also support STEF and IGES. And you can see a preview of the model here. We assume units are meters, so I'll select that. Now I just need to align that with the other component. And I'll do that using the align tool. Let me just ensure that everything's aligned properly. It looks like it is. So now I want to draw the cooling ducts. And I'm going to start by actually adding a pump return to the chassis wall. So we already have a pump supply on the bottom left-hand side. And so to complete the loop, we'll need a pump return. So we'll go ahead and select the left-hand side of the chassis and then add the pump return. I want that to be five millimeters. And I have a location that I want to do that. Now I just need to attach a pump. So we already have a pump here, it's pump one. And that is also attached to the pump supply, so it forms a closed loop. If I select this arrow on the right-hand side, I can see the property sheet of the pump. So there are two ways that pump can be modeled. One is as a logical object, and the other is actually a physical object in the model. So for this case, I'll just want to keep it as a logical object, so I'll, I'll check external here. But that is always an option to put it actually within the model. And we also have an option for our fluid. Right now we have water plus glycol, but if I select this right arrow, I can pull up the property sheet. And here I could, for example, you know, create water or some other, or maybe I wanted to say a different percentage of glycol, so say 20, you know, let's say 15% glycol. And I could go in and change the properties here. So all of that is available to change as well. I go back to my pump and also see options for flow rate. So we have a fixed supply, which will provide a fixed volumetric flow rate, or we can use controlled flow rate. And this will operate off of a sensor typically controlling on a temperature. So for example, you could have a sensor on these high power components and if they reach above a certain temperature, the flow rate would change accordingly. Just to demonstrate the, uh, the control is here. We also have an option for heat specification. So we can ap apply a fixed supply temperature. We can apply a fixed temperature decrease across the two pump supply and pump return or a fixed heat extraction. And finally, we see here that we have attached a pump supply and pump return already. So this is a closed loop and therefore it's ready um, for, to be solved. So now that we have established a pumped return, we go ahead and draw our cooling ducts. And before I, well, what I could do here is I can select this pumped return and just click new. And then add a cooling duct and change the diameter to six millimeters. Click OK. And now we have a very easy to use drawing tool for 6 sigma ET for the cooling ducts, in which we can quickly draw in different levels in different directions. It makes it quite easy to draw what you're looking for. I'll delete that. And now I'll actually go ahead and draw the cooling ducts that we want to use for a model. So the cooling duct again, change it to six millimeters. Now I'll go to the above views to make it, to make it a little bit easier to draw what I'm looking for. I'll approximate where I think that that uh, hole to the front of that cold plate is. And then just verify that it is in the right location. Looks like it needs to come over slightly. There we go. 
And as simple as that, I've drawn a duct to connect that cold plate to that pump current. So I'll repeat the same process and connect the two cold plates. I'll just drag and drop a cooling duct in the model. And I'll roughly sketch out our cooling duct. And I'm going to go ahead and change the size. Now I just need to slightly rearrange these ducts. Okay. And bring this over. And finally, you bring this whole thing up. To the correct height and ensure that everything is in the right location. Okay. My final step here is to add vents to these ducts. So I can do that by right clicking on those vents or those uh, cooling ducts, and then add a vent and just apply it to the end of the cooling ducts. So this is important to add before going on to the solve so that cool flow will be allowed to go through these cold plates. Oops. And there we go. So that's it. That's a simple preview on how to build up a liquid cooling model in Six Sigma ET. So now I want to talk about leak detection. There's a simple and easy method for leak detection using our flow solution object. Some of you may already be familiar with flow solution regions. We've used those to figure out where our leaks are occurring. So we can do that by navigating to our pump supply and just add a flow solution region here. And now we can actually step through the liquid cooling domain and discover where the fluid is flowing. So in this case, I've increased it all the way to 1,000, and that steps it through 1,000 grid cells. If I go ahead and increase that a little bit farther, and here we see our leak. And so it's a very easy to see and visual way of of uh, finding the leaks. So once you've found that, just step it back so it's a little bit easier to see. And I'll just go in here and quickly fix the error. Now I just need to go to model ver verify model and I will run checks again to make sure that there are no more leaks. Um, and then I can repeat the process until I've discovered and corrected any and all leaks in the model. Okay, so now I'll just go back to our flow solution region, and I'll go ahead and increase this to some large number, let's say 2,000. Now you can see that the entire loop is a single flow solution region, which means that it is closed and there are no leaks in the model. So now you can see we have a simple method for discovering leaks, and that's how you go about doing it. So I'm going to go ahead and hide this. And one thing I want to talk about before going into results analysis is I want to look at uh, gridding. So we have a, our grid control objects, which you may be familiar with, and I can quickly add one here. And we have several options available. So we have the standard X, Y, Z, and 3D. We also have geometry based. So what geometry based allows you to do is allows you to play, apply a grid in three different uh, ways. You can apply it to the solid, uh, which will apply it actually to the duct itself. You can apply it to the fluid, which will apply it to the internal uh, coolant and actually allow you to control the grid within the duct. And then finally, you can inflate into the fluid. 
And what this will do is allow you to change the grid within the duct and also externally. So you can expand your grid outside of the, of the, of the duct and increase grid that way. And this will allow you to better capture the heat transfer, say if you have a, a hot liquid flowing through cooling pipes and you want to make sure that you're capturing that properly, you can add grid using this inflate into fluid option. I want to make sure and touch on that as well. Okay, so let's talk about results analysis and post-processing. So I'll switch over to a version of the model that has results. And first I want to, to demonstrate our pre-configured views. So I'll go to our results tab over here. And for example, we have lots of different pre-configured views and they're useful for seeing quick snapshots of useful information that you want to see. For example, power. So we can quickly see where our high power components are and make sure that everything is being modeled correctly when it comes to say all of these DIMMs that they make sure that they all have an appropriate uh, power attached to them. Another thing we can do is we can quickly look at surface temperature and see hot spots on our board. So we see that these DIMMs over here are significantly hotter than the others and that would make sense. These are about 2 watts whereas the other DIMMs are maybe 0 0.5. Another thing we can look at are results planes. So if I go ahead and click on result plane and let me change the pre-configured view to object defined. And I'll go ahead and flip the geometry in the positive direction. And here we can quickly see a snapshot of our temperature. I'm going to go ahead and change the orientation of this a little bit. And let me flip it to the negative. So here we can quickly see a snapshot of temperatures across the cut, cut across of our board. And we can see what's going on with the cold plate, the high temperature component, high power component, I should say, and also these dims on the right side. This is a useful way to quickly see that kind of information. If I go ahead and delete this result plane. And finally, I want to show streamlines. So for streamlines, let me go ahead and make this cold plate transparent. I'm going to add a streamline to the vent on this uh, cooling duct. So you can see we have arrows here. We can change the color by to lots of different options. We can change it to velocity or whatever you want to see. And we have different options for our appearance. So we can do dust. We have arrows, of course, um, ribbons. There's lots of different options there. We can also change the number of lines and that will increase the density of our streamlines. So if I go back to arrow, see the effects of that. And finally, we can animate it either by hitting F5 or we can navigate to the animations tab and also have options available there for adjusting our streamlines, our animations. Well, that's all I have to show today. I hope it was very informative and thank you for your time.